Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our Intermediate Core Data video tutorial series. In this video, we'll look at creating your own mapping model, which Core Data will then use to perform the migration from an older version of your data model to the latest. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video and challenge. You'll have refactored the device type into a separate entity with a relationship to a device entity. In the beginner series, we looked at lightweight migrations, where you make simple changes to your data model, and then Core Data can infer the changes required to go from the old to the new. Instead of having Core Data infer it, you can manually create a mapping model. This contains the instructions to go from one version of the data model to another. At its simplest, mapping models can just move data between fields and even across relationships. If you have some custom logic in your migration, or you have your own code that you want to insert in the migration process, you can subclass NS Entity Migration Policy and then point to your subclass in the mapping model. When the migration happens, Core Data will call methods on the subclass during each stage of the migration. You can override these methods to add in your own custom code. There are three stages of the migration process. First, Core Data sets up two managed object contexts, one for the source and one for the destination. Then the first stage is to create those destination entities and move the attribute data over. When all the entities and attributes are in place, the second stage is to move the relationships over. And then the final stage is to run all of the validations and ensure the data store is in a consistent state. In the current My Devices app, each device has a string attribute device type that's set to something like iPhone or watch. In the demo, we'll refactor this so that there's a new device type entity. Then each device will have a one-to-one -one relationship with a device type, and then the device type will have a too-many relationship to all of its devices. The problem is that device type should be unique. If you have 10 phones, you don't want 10 separate phone device types. You just want one phone device type that all of the phones can reference. This isn't something that mapping models can do on their own, which means you'll see in the demo how to set up one of those NS Entity Migration Policy subclasses, and we'll override stage one of the migration to manually look up and create those device types. Before we go ahead and update the data model, I'm just going to run the app once to make sure that we have a set of data with the current data model. Here's the app. I've got a few fields with some data filled in as well. You can see I've got the device name, I filled in the type, the device ID, purchase date, owner, and this one has an image too. So we've got a full record here. And I also have this phone record here filled in as well. And I want to make sure I have some data here so that after we do the migration, we can check and make sure that all of this data survived the migration. So I've just got these two records with some data, and then we'll check that at the end of the demo to make sure they're still there. Let me head back to Xcode. And the first thing we're going to need to do is create a new model version. Rather than just go ahead and add new entities and mess around with the attributes, for the mapping model, we're going to need a source and a target model version. So we need to actually keep this model exactly how it is, sort of frozen in time. So with the model selected, I'm going to go to Editor, Add Model Version. And I'll, the default name here is fine. My device is 2. It'll be like version 2. And now you'll see I can expand this here. And we have My Devices and My Devices 2. And My Devices has that little green check mark on there to say that that's the current version. Let's go ahead and make the changes we need to My Devices 2. I'll select that one. And we're going to need a new entity to hold the device type. This one will just have a single attribute name. That's going to be a string. I'll make that non-optional. And let's add the relationship now as well. Each device type will be able to call on its list of that kind of device. So that's just going to head over to device. And we'll set up the inverse in a second. And let me just switch and switch back. All right. So here in the inspector, this one doesn't have to be optional either because we'll always have a set. It could be the empty set, but that's fine. And it's going to be a too many relationship. OK, that looks good for device type. Let me just also select the entity. And I'm going to add a constraint. This is the unique constraint, because we only want, for 
for example, the name of the device type is going to be something like iPhone or watch or Mac or whatever it is. And we only want one of each of these. Remember, that's why we need to customize our mapping model. I'm going to go ahead and add a constraint here. And it says comma separated properties. And we just need a unique constraint for name. That looks good. Let's switch over to the device entity. Here's device type. It's currently a string. I'm going to highlight that and just hit delete to get rid of it. It's not going to be an attribute. It's going to be a relationship now. We'll give it the same name, device type. Destination is going to be device type. We should have our inverse here. And let me just switch and switch back to refresh this thing. And it's a device type. It's a 2-1 relationship, which looks good. And I think we're all set with the data model. We're going to need a new NS managed object subclass for device type because that's our new entity. Let's go ahead and say create NS managed object subclass for my devices too. And we want device type. Make sure that goes in the right group. And let's create that. And I'm just going to make those two properties and the relationship non-optional like that. We also changed device, but I'm actually going to go ahead and change that manually just because I don't want to regenerate it. It's going to mess up all my optionals. So remember, the only thing we changed here was device type is no longer a string. It's device type, and that's an optional now. And then here in device, I actually have this custom property from a long time ago. And let's just go ahead and print out the name. OK, and the final thing we need to do is move that check mark over to My Devices 2. I'm going to select the main My Devices model. And then in the inspector, if I open the Identity Inspector, there's this field here for model version current. And it's My Devices. I'm going to change that to My Devices 2. And now you'll see the little check mark has moved over. If I run the app now, which I'm not going to, then it's going to be using this My Devices 2 model from now on. Let me just build, because we've changed the device property, we should get a few build errors because there are some type mismatches. So you can see the errors are, we're expecting it to be a string, and it's not a string anymore. This is actually going to be the name. And this is where we're saving the device type. Remember, right now the user can enter into the text field whatever they want. They could type in Mac or Android phone or whatever else. And we're just going to save it because it used to be a string. It's not a string anymore. And you're going to actually fix that up in the challenge. I'm just going to comment that out for now. So we won't be saving the device type anymore. And we have one more in our app delegate where we load up the test data. So again, I'm just going to comment that out. That's something for you to look at a little bit later. I think we're all set. We just have a warning for an unused variable, but that's fine. Let's go ahead with our second big step, which is to create a mapping model. I'm going to create a new file here. We'll go with iOS core data mapping model. The source data model is going to be our version 1. The target is version 2. And I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a descriptive name like that. And here it is, model v1 to v2. Let's just have a quick look at the device, because that'll be a good one to look at. You can see that the device ID of the destination is going to be the source device ID. Image is going to be image. Name is going to be name. Purchase date is purchase date. Easy. It's filled it in. Remember, lightweight migrations, Xcode is actually doing this inferring of the mapping model behind the scenes. So it's already filled in a lot of this for us, which is nice. The relationships are also. The owner relationship is just going to carry over. This complicated looking function is just going to copy over to the destination all of the relationships. Device type, though, that's our new relationship. And you can see it's blank because Xcode doesn't really know where this thing came from. We can go ahead and leave that blank. And just to make sure that this mapping model is actually doing something, I'm going to change the device ID one to one of those custom functions. Maybe you can see it a little bit better here in the inspector. 
the syntax here is a little bit Objective-C like. If you don't know Objective-C, then the way it works is it's like a message send. So I have this string migrated. I'm going to call string by appending format on that string, which is going to append something to that string. I'm going to append, this is the format marker for some kind of an object, and I'm going to append the source's device ID. That means that in the original model, if the device ID is 12345 or something like that, then after the migration, it should be migrated 12345. I'm just putting this in here as an example to show how you can change the data during a migration. And again, when we run the app with version 2 of the model, we should see this migrated string on our device IDs. The rest of these we'll just leave. The person migration looks good. That's also an easy one. It's only got a name and a list of devices. I'm going to leave that as is. And then device type is special. Where is the mapping model going to get all of our device types? That's the thing we're going to have to do with some custom code. So I'm going to delete this entity mapping here. All right, that's it for our mapping model. Let's create our custom class. I'm going to make a new file. Just make it an iOS Swift file. And I'll call the class device type migration, version 1 to version 2. Let's create that. I don't need any of this boilerplate. And here's our starter class. There's a class name. It's a subclass of NS Entity Migration Policy. Before I forget, let me go to the mapping model. And in the inspector, you'll see there's this field for custom policy where you can put in a class name. This one's a little bit strange. You have to put the full module name. So I'm going to say my devices dot and then the name of the class, which is device type migration v1 to v2. That means when core data, when the app starts, the core data migration runs, it's going to run, look for this class and run the code from there. We're here in the class now, and we'll just need to override one method. And that's the method that's going to create the destination entity and then migrate over the attributes. And that's going to be before it starts the relationships, because before it starts the relationships, this is the point where I'm going to want to create those device type entries myself. Let's go ahead and start the implementation. It's a pretty simple start. The method is create destination instances for source instance. It's going to pass us the source. This is the NS manage object of the original. Then we have the NS entity mapping reference. And then we have a reference to this NS migration manager. And the manager is going to give us the source manage object context and the destination context. The first thing we're going to do is just call through to super. And that's going to do the work of doing all of these migrations here. It's going to create the destination for us. And it's going to migrate these four attributes for us. And then that's the point that we're going to do our custom work. Since I have access to the source instance, I have that string value of the device type. So what I'm going to do is set up a fetch request and a predicate, and I'm going to see if we already have a device type with that particular name. Let's pause here and see what's going on so far. I'm creating this variable device type instance. This is where I'm going to put the device type once I found it. So I'm just going to make that an implicitly unwrapped optional. It's nil right now. I'm getting the device type name. Again, I'm going to the source instance. I'm going to grab the device type, which we know is a string. And then here's my fetch request. We're going to look up a device type where the name equals the device type name. And then notice I'm calling that fetch request on the destination context, not the source, because we have to see in the destination if we already have this or not. Here's the good news case. If we have found it, if there's something in that results array and we get it and it's an NS object, then we're done. We found it. 
whatever this device type is, it's already in there and I'm just going to assign it to this variable that I set up back here. And we're done. If we don't find it though, that means this is the first time we're coming across an iPhone or a watch or whatever, and we actually need to create it. So I'll fill in the code to create it. This should be familiar. We've seen this many times before. Again, this should be pretty familiar. We have to get an entity, again, get it from the destination. We're creating our new NSManage object, and then we're setting the name. And then we're holding on to the reference for it. All right, now we're down here at the bottom, and whether we've searched and we found it, or whether we created it ourselves, doesn't matter at this point. We have a device type instance in any case, and now we have to get the destination device. That's the current thing that's being migrated. We need to get a reference to it and then set its device type to this thing that we just got. And this is it. It's possible that we have more than one entity being migrated at one time. So the way you get the destination that it's already created, remember we called super way at the beginning here, so it's already done some work for us, which means I'm going to ask it for the destination instances. I just pass it the mapping name and I give it the source. I say, here is the source instance and now it's going to return me an array of the destination version of whatever I pass in this array. I'm going to grab whatever's in that array. Hopefully that'll be our destination and once I get it, I'm just going to set the device type instance as the new device type. And that's it. We've created our device type record with this code here. And then we're going to set that as our destination over here. And I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and build and run. Remember, we have version 2 selected. And before I do that, let me go to the core data stack before I forget and find the persistent store coordinator. And there's this option, migrate persistent store automatically. We still want that, but infer mapping model automatically. We don't actually want that because we have our own mapping model, which is I'm going to set that to false. So it's going to say, don't infer the mapping model. Use the one that we have provided, and we have indeed provided one. All right, I think we're all set. Let's build and run. Cross our fingers. And here we are, post-migration. There's a little bit, something a little bit funny with the display with the optional. Remember, the device type is now optional. But that's just a display issue. We can fix that. Let's have a look at our 38 millimeter watch. Our image is still here. Device owner is here. The data looks good. The device type is successfully changed over to watch. Remember, this is now a device type record, not a string. And the device ID that migrated, that we put in the mapping model, is now here. This one looks good too. Still owned by Christine. And the device ID migrated. And that's mapping models. You can see it can be as simple as just going in and using the mapping model and having different expressions here for all of your entities. And it can be as complicated as well as setting up a custom class and adding your own logic to it like we did here. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave you with a challenge. That was quite the involved demo, but we have our data structure all set and migrated. Your challenge is to fix up the remaining parts of the user interface to handle the new device to device type relationship. As always, you'll find all the details in the challenge document, along with a complete walkthrough in case you need some help along the way. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.